All right, uh, show of hands, how many uh, application developer engineers in the room? Oh, this is awesome. All right, cool. Uh, how many of you are like building locally on your host? Yeah, like on your, like on your, just on your machine. Yeah, like locally on your, yeah. Cool. Uh, how many of you are, how many of you are building in containers using Docker files on your own? Yeah? Source image. Source image. Okay, all right, we're ahead of the curve already. But I think you have some like Red Hat swag on your thing, so maybe you don't count. I think it's right. It, you do, you do, it's good. Uh, um, how many of us are like using the cloud for development, using the cloud for, for the builds? Yeah. And shout out at me, like, what, what, is, what does your build process look like? Is it, is it a Jenkins thing? Like, how are you running your builds? How are you doing your tests? Yeah, all right. I, so I think, I'm sorry? Jenkins pipelines. Jenkins pipelines. Look at that, all right. So we're going to be right at home today. Uh, my name is Andrew Rubinger. Uh, I'm working with Red Hat in our middleware division. That tends to deal with our application development stuff. Uh, and I'm working on our developer experience. Uh, and I'm joined today uh, on stage with Alatendu Mahanti, who is of the CDK team. That's our container development kit, right? And um, when we proposed this talk some time back, as, as we have a habit of doing, um, we were a little bit unsure as to what we would have ready to show everyone by Summit. I can say with, with some confidence that we're pretty, pretty happy with where we're at. The title of this talk is Reproducible Development to Live Applications. So, I guess maybe the first question is to you guys, what do I mean by reproducible development? Source, source image guy, you must, you know. Yeah, like repeatable builds to, to me and to Lala are like amazingly important. It means basically that, you know, this whole, it works on my machine. If, have we ever had this ridiculous discussion? Like, okay. Um, that's, that is some craziness that just needs to end and be gone forever and stricken from, from development lexicon, right? Um, for those of us who have used the, the Archelian testing platform, that, that is a project I had worked on for years before, and its job was to basically you know, do the same thing, eliminate this whole it works on my machine problem. So these environment differences have got to go, uh, and we want to slim down our application environments to really just like the bare bones difference between environments. That might be environment variables, that could be some shared secrets or persistent volume mounts, but like aside from that, we'd all basically like to be looking at the same thing whereby our um, local development environment looks as close as possible to our production environment as we can. And we want to be testing in those same areas. So to do that, you know, we've got containers have brought the promise of easily deployable standard runtimes. And maybe we should have said easily shippable standard runtimes, because you can send them around. But we're application developers, and for anyone who raised their hand earlier about uh, writing Docker files, like I am of the opinion from a developer experience perspective that we don't want to deal with more layers. Like while it's cool that it brings us more stability, that's now adding another step into your development life cycle to deal with Docker files or to deal with OpenShift templates or any of these things. We want to write our apps, we want to build them, and we want to be focusing on our business logic and just kind of have it taken for granted that we have a known build and deployment environment. And also, it's you know, one of my things I think that we should be starting with continuous delivery and evolving from there, not starting from some bootstrapped application and then figuring out how to apply CI and, and move on and on, right? So this is the challenge, I, I think, that, that, is, that is facing us now, is how do we wire all this stuff up early? Um, and that, to me, infers a getting started experience, which is we want to be able to let you, coming new to start a new project, uh, which in a microservices world might be like really frequent because you might have services come and go and new ones and old ones and retire, right? We want you to pick a use case that you're looking to fulfill. Uh, we're gonna let you select your runtime, which is from the newly announced product, Red Hat OpenShift Application Runtimes, or ROAR. I'll call that ROAR for the rest of the, of the presentation. Uh, and you can select from your runtime a Vertex, a Swarm, or Spring Boot, and then we're gonna launch it to GitHub and OpenShift Online, and, and that's you know, what this talk will, will primarily focus on, right? Um, but I think at first, like, let's talk a little bit about some of the foundational technologies that will help bring this kind of stability to your machine, to your host, and, and that's Minishift and the Red Hat Container Development Kit, and Lala is much more equipped uh, to talk about that than I am. So I'm going to let you go. Yeah, please. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. Um, 
So how many of you use CDK at all? Anybody have used? Okay, so I think the CDK 2.3 or something like that, right? Okay, so so CDK 3 is like is new stuff. I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Uh, so before that, let's get some context about what we thought about when we we're trying to develop CDK, right? So uh, like Andrew said, one of the most important factor for us, like having a development environment which is like similar to production. I mean, it should be like almost as like clone, right? Um, so that, that's one of the primary uh, requirement when we started CDK project, right? And then we enable developers to develop microservices, uh, build containers, you know, containers applications, stuff like that. And then uh, when we have a team, there are people who are using different operating systems. So we don't care what operating system they use. We want basically uh, uh, to a CDK which actually can give you consistent experience irrespective of what operating system you use, right? You use Rail or Red Hat Enterprise Linux or maybe Microsoft Windows, whatever version you like, right? And uh, OS X, Mac OS, right? So, um, and the object was very simple. Um, and then we had a certain, uh, you know, opinionated thing, we, what we like, right? OpenShift is our container platform. Um, we have, I think we have been hearing a lot about OpenShift, which is uh, Kubernetes, enterprise Kubernetes. And then we want to run containers on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, because that's what we're going to run containers in production. So these two things are very clear to us, right? So, and people who are like new to CDK, they don't know what is exactly CDK. Uh, container Development Kit actually provides you an OpenShift container platform uh, locally on your workstation, laptop, right? Uh, on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So that's, that's like, I mean, single line to uh, explain what is CDK. And then to uh, understand CDK a uh, little bit, I mean, we have been doing CDK2 for last, I think, more than little more than one year. And we started with uh, CDK2 version. Uh, before that, we had obviously CDK1. And CDK2, we had Vagrant. It's based on Vagrant. So we had Vagrant boxes for uh, different hypervisors, what we support. And then we had a couple of Vagrant plugins. And we had two Vagrant files. Uh, one for to give, yeah. One for you know, giving uh, users basically OpenShift container platform. And one to give a single node Kubernetes setup, right? But there are a lot of issues. We found, actually, you know, most of the time, we just struggled with Vagrant issues. I mean, Vagrant is cool. I use it. I mean, it's really cool. But people who are not you know, into Vagrant, they really find it difficult to sometimes you know, solve Vagrant issues. Uh, and do remember you got into one issue, right? Yeah. So, um, so people actually got into issues which are not related to CDK, but while trying to install CDK on Vagrant. So we wanted to, we wanted to fix that. We wanted to make it you know, more seamless for people to just get started, right? So with CDK, with CDK 3, we rebuilt, actually rewrote the CDK completely in Golang. It's actually, um, I'm going to talk about what exactly we did, but ultimately now it's a single binary. It's just mini shipped. And um, I'm going to talk about that also a little bit. And now it contains a Rail 7 ISO, customized, of course, uh, what is required for CDK, and then mini shipped binary. And this OCP, OC command line, if you are familiar with OpenShift, right? So everything will be bundled with just one binary, and the user have to just take one binary and just run it. No need, no need to have all this vagrant setup. You know, we want to remove that complexity what was involved, and then it just provides OpenShift container platform because OpenShift is nothing but Kubernetes enterprise. So we don't need to provide another Kubernetes setup and one OpenShift setup. We just don't need, don't need it, right? So uh, like I said. Better user experience. If you start using it, you will get to know. Um, I, I've been talking to people who, who have been using Minishift and the CDK Beta 3. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback. And easier installation step, because just one binary, you don't have to do it with multiple installing artifacts. Like, you don't have to install a, a first Vagrant, then Vagrant plugins, a um, lot of stuff. And it, we support now all the native hypervisors. On OS X, we set, uh, set up uh, Xive. And on Rail, we support KVM. On Windows, we, set, uh, we support um, uh, Hyper-V. So I think that is very good. And it's, it's pure awesomeness. I, <laughs> I, I definitely like my project, you know. And uh, just to note, uh, CDK3 beta is already available for use. Uh, we're working on CDK3.0 um, GA. Uh, I cannot exactly tell you when it will be out, but it should be soon. Yeah, so I think Andrew will give you a nice demo now. Yeah, all right, thanks. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're going to do um, 
I don't know, we're gonna test out the live coding that I haven't done on stage in quite a while, so this is gonna be, I think this is gonna be high wire for all of us, I suppose, right? Um, let's, let's, start, let's start with this. Uh, this is something that we're kinda happy to debut here uh, at, at Summit, and this right here is launch.openshift.io. This is a feature of OpenShift.io, the end-to-end -end development platform that we announced uh, earlier on today when, when Todd was at the, the big stage in the keynote. Um, and this is kind of a, a quicker on-ramp, maybe. This is for your casually interested engineer, or maybe you if you're looking to quickly get started with a project. To me, the problem is uh, I want to be able to explore a new technology or learn a little bit about a use case with the minimum amount of emotional and time investment and mental investment, right? I want to be able to to get running. So we've announced this at launch.openshift.io as an early access. Um, but because I'm a little tricky and because you're all here and we're going we're to be trusting, I think we're going to, we're going to invoke the, uh, the secret button that's, I don't know, that's something like right there, maybe. There we go. OK. So now we're in, right? It's user friendly from the start, right? Everyone should know to hit that, that button. Uh, and, and we're going to start you off with a, a pretty simple workflow. We're going to ask you what we feel is like the bare minimum questions that we have to ask you to get you off and on your way. And the first thing that you'll, that you'll answer is, do you want to do a continuous delivery flow, or do you want to kind of launch this manually? If you launch it manually, we'll package everything up. We'll give you your application as a zip, and you're on your way to do whatever you want with it. If you do the continuous delivery flow, we're going to hold your hand through things a little bit more. We're going to take the application. We'll push it into your namespace in GitHub. We'll set up an OpenShift project for you, an OpenShift online starter. Uh, and we will set up a pipeline, and we'll set it and build it. So this whole thing is going to be like at the push of a button, built and deployed on the cloud, or not, depending upon how friendly our internet's doing today. So let's let's see how this goes. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll we'll log in. Everything goes through the Red Hat Developer Program. So if you have a Developer Program account, that's an entitlement to this. It's all available as you know, it's a free zero cost subscription, and it links in through uh, what one of our engineers referred to me as our NASCAR. Apparently, this, have you ever heard this term? If you put up like, like here's your social logins, whatever you've got, you can, you can hook in through there. I'll hook in through GitHub, uh, probably the nerdiest of these social logins. And now I'm all like logged in. Um, the first thing we'll ask you is what type of app you want to have. We're going to grow out this list over time. But there's a couple things that you can learn about. Like we can teach you a little bit about a REST API level zero, which is not really RESTful. It's not all that matured. It's gonna kind of an HTTP endpoint. Uh, or you can learn a little bit about health checks. And I think health checks are cool because that tells you about a foundational like platform technology. So yeah, we'll pick health check. And here comes the screen where I have to like scan the audience and I see like the project lead of Swarm is here and maybe no one from Vertex or Boot. So I'm going to choose my favorite runtime, Swarm, obviously. There you go. We play favorites here. Uh, the only thing I really need to do is come up with like an OpenShift project name, and I'm going to do my best to make sure this is unique. So we'll call it like Health Check ALR for my initials, Swarm, and OpenShift Online. I think that should be unique enough. Uh, and you can also do things like set some Maven properties, Group ID, Artifact ID, any of the things you're used to doing when you're bootstrapping a new project. We'll hit next, and we're given a little review screen, which we'll just kind of confirm. And here's Here's the, like, the real value out of this thing. We're going to create your GitHub repository. We'll push the code into it. We'll create an OpenShift project for you. We'll set up a build pipeline, configure it. And then uh, we'll also add a webhook into your GitHub project so that any subsequent pushes you do into GitHub will trigger the pipeline. And this is it. Like We're in, we're out, we're done. We're now no longer interacting with this service. Launch just, does just that. When a rocket ship leaves the pad, it doesn't come back to the pad. At least it didn't when we started working on this, and now it comes back to the pad all the time, and that's just how rockets work now, I guess. So we have to do a little bit of renaming. But let's take a look at what we've got. We've got uh, a GitHub repository here, and we can use this as a, a starting off point for doing some of our development. So we're going to run through some local flows. And I'll also call out, too, that like you know, at this point, this thing has also created a project for us on OpenShift Online. So all we really got to do is log into here. And we can see for how many people have never seen this screen, ne not familiar with the OpenShift console yet. OK, so most of us are. That's cool. For those who aren't, this is, this is your, your OpenShift console, right? And what you're now looking at is uh, a Jenkins service that's exposed into two different services, but really just one Jenkins master that's booting up for us. And at the top right here, 
see what I can do to make this a little bigger for you. You see that like there's a pipeline that's pending. So as soon as the Jenkins master comes up, this pipeline is going to take over and it's going to build and deploy our thing. So we're going to leave this be for a couple minutes. A little bit unreasonable to expect that it's going to be all up immediately, and we'll focus in on our our local stuff. So I'll I'll copy in this git link right here, and I'll say git clone. Uh, and now I've got this app here, right? Cool, super awesome. I can do a Maven clean install. We've all kind of seen it. Mostly Maven people here, yeah. So a lot of Java engineers, yeah. Who's coming from other stuff? Any like non-Java Maven people? All right, so we're familiar with this guy. <laughs> a little, oh, all right. A generalist, I like that. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's get into it. Here's, here's another interesting thing. What do I have here? This, um, this is also an OpenShift console, but like Lala said, you, you know, we have the CDK. So this is actually now an instance of OpenShift running on my machine. So we're going to try and like maybe let's like work through what this now means for us to have launched something and how that relates to our like ordinary like development workflow. I've now built this here. Uh, I call it on host. I would, I would love for someone to tell me like a, a better thing, but like I call this a local build on host because it's like this machine is running Fedora and I just did it there and it was built in whatever environment I have set up. So that's like my host. Um, and that's probably the, the, the quickest way to kind of get this done, but it's also the most maybe unreliable, right? So I can also do uh, maven wildfly swarm dash swarm run. Yeah, swarm. You know, you get like really, I do very with my, my keyboard at home that I, you know, it's like, it's like I've never typed before. Oh, the skip test. Uh, we did it. We did, yeah. We did a. Um, we we did like a field training yesterday, and um, and you know it takes a little bit extra time to run the tests while you're demoing the stuff, and and they're kind of yelling at me to like skip the tests, and I'm yelling at them to never skip the tests. That's why they're there. The whole point of this thing is to have a build pipeline that has tests that you can then make sure before you, because if you don't have tests, you just push them into production, which isn't normally what you want. Uh, but yeah, okay, so this thing is now running, and so now I've run the build on my local host environment, and now I'm also serving it out of my local host environment. What did I do here? 8088. Pick a port, any port. Right, okay, so this is the application that we've just launched, right? It's got some stuff in it. Um, and uh, it's running, and I can say, uh, you know, like, hello, LR, hello, Red Hat Summit. So we try, and, we try and, in addition to, like, opening up endpoints, we try and make it such that if you visit the app, you have a website, and it kind of shows you what it's doing a little bit, right? So that's cool. But um, let's not forget that when you're dealing with, like, microservices development, there's a challenge to this. There's an inherent cost to modularization and to adopting microservices. And that's that by nature of making them all kind of coordinate together, we end up pushing logic that we ordinarily would have had as part of our application layer. We start pushing that up into the platform. And that's what this health check example is really about. So I've got this thing running in Wildfly Swarm on my local machine. But remember, like, there's this kill me button, which is supposed to, like, its job is to, you know, kill the thing and show that, like, there's rec auto recovery as part of the platform, but I'm not running it in the platform. If I kill this, it's just going to die and never come back up, right? So when it comes to my like testing of this locally, maybe I can invest just a little bit more time uh, than doing it locally on host. I can use my like local cloud through the CDK to actually get this thing to work. So. Let's do one more important thing, because we're not just gonna like we're not just here to mess around with something without changing it a little bit. Let's let's like see some changes. Um, we're all familiar with this flow here. This is the standard like Red Hat Developer Studio import as Maven project, get Maven project. We're all kind of like down with this idea, right? No one here is like so super into like editing in Emacs or whatever. Like we're all kind of cool with IDEs. Good times. 
Um, the, the big change that I want to make here is this, this index HTML. Um, we'll kind of like wait for this guy to finish up. And then I might say in here, I don't know if I were to change this, I can do a style tag, which is, I know I said it's like not 2007 anymore, but apparently, apparently we're going to make it 2007. Background. Something super obvious. Background color is going to be, who's a hex code guru? What, what do we like? F00. Someone's got a favorite color. F00. <laughs> this was designed by an engineer, for sure. Like, had the hex code off at the top of the head, does not care what the hell it looks like at all. All right. <laughs> F00 it is. So we'll just kind of save this. Now let's do, let's, let's do something kind of fun. Let's go into. Um, Remember, we've got our, our own OpenShift instance here running locally. I'll make a new project for this. Uh, I'll call it like demo, because that's what we're doing here. And um, I'll do one more thing. I'll make sure that I like OC project demo so that like the context of this thing is, is using this application. Now there's this thing. Anyone's heard of the, the Fabricate Maven plugin? It's kind of a cool piece from like the Fabricate upstream family. This is going to be something that enables us to build our binary, build our war locally. So building it locally on the host. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain while we type here. That's going to be fabri Maven uh, Fabric 8 Deploy with a P of OpenShift. And we'll let it skip the tests this time just to, just to be fun about it. So what this is going to do is we're now, we're still building locally on the host, right? Uh, on my operating system, but you're going to start to see some green messages pop up here. And the green messages is going to be a Fabricate Maven plugin invoking an S2I build because Kubernetes and OpenShift, they don't run binary deployables, they run containers. So we've got to bake this as a container. And if you remember from earlier, I said I'm an application developer. I do not care about messing around with Docker files. I don't want to touch them. I don't want to touch OpenShift templates. They're all very well and good, and I'll deal when I've got to customize something. But for the most part, I want to make my application and just have OpenShift run it. So I build it on my machine, and then I have Fabric 8 call into this CDK that is also running on my machine to build an image for me, bake an image so I just have it. And I take it, and I run it, and it'll push it in. So here, what it's doing is it's pushing in these layers into the OpenShift instance that's running on my machine. Let's see if we can see that this has popped up here in our overview screen. Yeah, and you'll see that like of that the demo project I've made, it's now created for us a deployment in an image, and this pod is coming up. And when this is coming up, this will now be ready for us. And instead of it running on my host machine, on my on my host, it'll be running inside the VM on OpenShift. So still local, but now in the VM and on OpenShift. And now, now I'm finally in this place where I have a known Build, uh, I'm, I'm in a known deployment environment. I've built it on my own environment because I just kind of like made a save, built it on my host, built the binary, and then had OpenShift containerize it, but I'm running in a known uh, deployment environment. And now I see my changes are here. I haven't committed anything. I'm just, you know, this is for the quick, like, I want to make a change. I want to run tests here. I want to make a change. I want to see it here. This will give it to you in an environment that looks very much like it will in production. And we can actually do the cool stuff about the health check here, which is we'll test the endpoint again, say, hey, summit. And it says, hey, summit. And now we'll, we'll, we'll call the kill me button, which will actually kill this. It says here, I don't know if you could see, like the application's been killed. And the interesting part about this is you'll see that that dark blue circle has now become light blue as Kubernetes and OpenShift has noticed that the pod has been killed and now it knows, oh no, we've been declared to run an instance of these, and it's gone. So we got to fire up another one. So it will fire up another one for us. The application, the page here, will notice that again and say, like, yep, we're, we're back online, and the recovery took 18 seconds. So there's a lot going on here. We want to get you going really quickly. We want to make sure that you're going with some continuous delivery. We want you to let you develop locally on your host. But you've also got to be able to do this in a way that's in a real deployment environment that's able to take care, like take, take advantage 
of the features that your applications are going to be depending upon. Because microservices development is not just about making small applications. It's about the coordination and the orchestration of how they get together. And for that, you need to be able to test with the platform. And that, to me, if I'm going to take everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and like, like, what's the nut of it? It's the thing that enables me to go do that. It gives me a stable environment from the perspective you know, of, of an application developer. There's one more flow here that we can show. You may remember that this Jenkins build, this Jenkins build had been running when we last left off a little while ago. Here's the Jenkins instances down here. The pipeline has completed. Uh, and as a result of that, it's now created for us this deployment, just like we had manually pushed in earlier, only this is now running on OpenShift Online. This is a live application. For anyone who wants to go and with your phone type in the tweet level long character thing. Actually, you know what I'll do? Um, there's some sort of like a bit.ly thing. Is that still a, does that still exist? Bitly, uh, we will call this, and we'll shorten it. For anyone who wants to go look, um, I'll leave that on screen for a little bit. So there's like one more important component to this. You'll, see, you'll notice that the, the one that we just saw there, that was pulled in from the source. It's the same white background. It doesn't have our enhancements yet. Uh, but there's something we can do for that. Because again, we've set you up with continuous delivery from the beginning. So uh, I I'm, I'm happen to be a command line guy, so I'm just going to do this right here. Git status. Um, you know, we can also do this from within inside the IDE. I'm a command line guy. We'll, we'll git add uh, the stuff that, that we changed in source. And then we'll commit it with some sort of a commit message, like um, not that commit message. Um, update with debatable improvement to UI. <laughs> right, <laughs> too descriptive. <laughs> okay, so now I've like I've committed that change. I have that change locally. And you'll see that like here's my here's my OpenShift console. So watch what happens now. We're just going to take that change, git push into origin in the master branch. We'll push that in, uh, and when we do, this is kind of what I mean about the the continuous delivery out of the box. We've pushed it in. The webhook comes in. We've kicked off another build. Now this is going to run for a couple minutes. Run the build in the same way we've seen before. And then when you go and you update the link, where did I put it? This guy over here. In a couple minutes. Uh, the new deployment will have taken over, and this will now have a red background. So that's kind of like in the, in the whatever long it took us to explain this, that's how we're going to try and get you set up and going with tools that you are already using, with a workflow that you're already familiar with, how we get you going and uh, building quickly locally on your host, testing quickly locally on your host, getting a little bit more, more confidence by being able to test locally on your host within Minishift, uh, and then eventually pushing it out and getting it, seeing it reflected here live for the for the world to see. Yeah, I think maybe we want to get into some more, some more of the fundamental CDK stuff. Yeah, yeah, cool. Thanks very much, guys. Awesome. Yeah, awesome demo. Um, so, uh, what did I left off last time? Okay, so I think I covered this one, right? Yeah. yeah. I know we clicked like the magic button on launch.openshift.io, right? You can also install that into the CDK. And we've given you some instructions for anyone who goes to download these slides. There are instructions, uh, I think, a couple slides back. It's actually really slow. If I click it, it's like oh, is that a couple right? of yep. It could be that I'm running like eight containers in there. Ah, right I see. A whole bunch of, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think there's, there's, there's the root cause of it. Yeah, right there. Um, so I'm sorry. Is that right? I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, so we give you, if you go to like appdev.openshift.io slash docs, there's a mini shift installation doc, or you know, we'll send this around too. So you can install that Launchpad application, and instead of just pushing it on OpenShift online for while we're waiting for that to become you know, fully available, you can launch it into your mini shift environment and be able to use that too. Oh, yeah, this, all right, so don't go download it later. Take out your phones and take pictures. Yeah, we, we have already uploaded the slides. No, it's fine. It's, e it's either that, or this is the moment that everyone has decided to take a selfie, selfie. of them like, <laughs> sitting like, right, in the, right in the thing. 
I'm going to do that too. Lala's going to talk and I'm going to take a selfie. It's going to awesome. be awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, I mean, we heard some yeah. uh, like multiple times mini shipped. <laughs> so mini shipped is actually the upstream project. <laughs> upstream project for CDK, CDK3. Uh, and um, so anybody who is watching this space, so it actually, we in, for before mini shipped, we had like a couple of projects which were actually doing the same similar stuff. One was, um, you know, all in one origin vagrant box from um, uh, origin community. And also we had uh, atomic developer bundle which was basis, which was uh, upstream of CDK 2.x, right? And now with Minishipped, uh, these projects are like, uh, you know, closing the door. So basically, Minishipped is the next generation uh, tool to get you local, uh, you know, open ship locally. And we have published uh, Minishipped documentation already. It's there in docs.openship.org. If you, you know, anybody familiar with OpenShip documentation, right? So if you go down, there should be Minishipped documentation. And today we released actually 1.0, the first major version of Minishit. So if you are like, if I get you enough enthusiastic, you can go and download the Minishit from GitHub and try to run it. So it's released today or is it still? So no, it's, it's is the upstream project. That's what I mentioned, right? So CDK, uh, so in Minishit, um, I'm going to talk about it, what exactly it means upstream and versus Minishit upstream. Yes, yes. Now, today is 1.0, okay. uh, we released the final version. And, and how is that version of OpenShift? Uh, so, so in 1.0, the default version of origin, obviously upstream has uh, links to you know, OpenShift origin, and downstream CDK has uh, OpenShift container platform. So Minishift right now 1.0 relates to uh, actually have origin 1.5, but you can actually choose a version. There is a uh, hyphen hyphen OpenShift version flag, and you can actually choose a version if you want to. Let's say you want to use 1.4.1, or you want to maybe, maybe go to the new new stuff, 3.6 alpha 2, you can actually move. You can just have to mention that in the Miniship start, and then you can go to that. So by default, if you just do Miniship start, right now with 1.0.0, it will actually give you OpenShift origin 1.5.0. Yeah, yeah, that's the OpenShift container platform. Right, so that's, uh, so what happens whenever we release a CDK version, whatever the latest OCP, OpenShift Enterprise, OpenShift Container Platform available, that's by default uh, shipped in CDK, and also we provide a flag, again, people to change the version, if they want to, you know, let's say your, your production is currently on 3.4, and you want to actually use 3.4, because, you know, the whole deal is that your production and development environment should be same, right? So you can actually choose it. Uh, CDK beta does not have that option, uh, yeah, we add the feature in Minishit a little later. So now that it's in the upstream Minishit, it will come down to CDK eventually, you know. Okay. So um, so people who have not used Minishit, it just takes, uh, if, if you, obviously we need a hypervisor. So let's say if you have VirtualBox already installed and, uh, you know, that's the only hypervisor you have, you can just download Minishit binary and just say Minishit start and it will give you the OpenShift uh, origin. And in case of you're using KVM or Xive, then you need an extra Docker machine driver, um, you know, because the other hypervisor drivers are already in built into the lib machine library you use in Minishift. I want to talk about that a little bit. And so in case of if you have uh, a virtual box, let's say um, on OS X or maybe Windows 7 or something, right, you can just do Minishift start and just start. You don't need to do anything. That's right. That's because we want to make uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the default for CDK. Yeah, but upstream... Yeah, there's one command called um, Minishift setup CDK, that's it. And then you can just use, yeah, just one command because it's upstream. Um, I think I have, men I have mentioned in the next slide. Oh, it's really slow because of. <laughs> yeah, so you, you can see here the upstream project have two, uh, two choices for you when you run the OpenShift origin. Either you use the CentOS 7 thing, uh, CentOS 7 ISO, or use boot to docker. So the difference is uh, boot to docker, the size of boot to docker ISO is like 39 MB, and uh, but the CentOS ISO is like 300 MB. But the good part is obviously boot to docker is not an enterprise operating system, and CentOS is one. So if you I mean, that's, I, th I think, you know, for looking from like for application, for development and production point of view, CentOS 7 makes more sense because you actually have a docker environment similar to your production, right?
Okay, I'm gonna do next. I know someone who's putting in for a new laptop. Like, I run single node OpenShift real well on it, but it kind of crashes on Google Slides, so I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> Um, right, so uh, in case of Minishift, let's say you want to use a different ISO, uh, there's a, so you just check out the Minishift start usage, so there is hyphen hyphen ISO URL and you can just put, you know, point it to a different CentOS ISO and you can just boot with CentOS. And um, so there are a couple of features we have in Minishift, like you can choose the OpenShift origin version and we, recently we added a feature of add-ons, so what happens in Minishift is like when you do Minishift start, it gives you a very vanilla OpenShift origin setup. But let's say uh, people like uh, Andrew, he has his couple of other things to do. He wants to, you know, sometimes you want to actually import some templates maybe, you know, uh, or maybe you want to do like, you want any UI, like you want to able to run uh, containers as root, or you want admin user to log into the console because if you, you cannot by default log into the console as admin user, right? So you can actually do the stuff as part of add-on. So you can actually write a file, just add-on is a file, and there's ample documentation about it. So you can write your add-ons which actually customizes the uh, OpenShift instance you are getting from any shape according to your need, okay? So by default, we have two add-ons. One is any UID and admin user. So you have to just like, if you want to, you know, enable uh, that add-on, you can say ManyShift add-on install hyphen hyphen default. And then you say enable any UID or en enable admin user. So that then next time when you do ManyShift start, and then you will uh, automatically this add-ons will actually run for you. And we are in the process of adding some more features to the add-on uh, thing, you know, like add-on run or add-on apply. So every time you want to explicitly run an add-on, you can run these commands. And there's OCNV command. So, so what happens now, we want to also train people, right, how they actually use a proper OpenShift cluster. So we want them to use OC binary more and more, right? They'll get familiar with how OpenShift actually work. So when you, dub, when you do Minishift start, it actually pulls in the OC binary and puts, puts inside the dot home dot miniship directory. So now, how do you, you know, enable you just to use that OC binary. So if you run OC in V, it will tell you how, a command to run so that it sets the environment variable in a shell. So next time you can just run OC commands directly. You don't have to download the OC binary again or something like that, right? And then OpenShift, we have OpenShift command, which actually tells you about certain things like you want to see what app is running and what is this route, route or maybe, um, you know, all this information. So I think I have copy pasted a couple of commands. I, I can, I will let you go through this a little bit. Um, I have skipped the Minishift start, stat, status, delete, IP, uh, all these things, you know, I skipped. So the cool, I, one of the coolest command I like is like Minishift console. So you do Minishift console and it opens the console for you in the web browser. So then you can say, just log in. And uh, other thing is Docker EMB. So when you're using Red Hat Interpel Linux or CentOS, then you don't want, you actually want to use, you want to use the Docker daemon coming from rail to build your containers. Let's say you are just building one image, you know, and, um, and then you want to use that image. You can use the image to run the application in the OpenShift, right? You want to, so what you can do is like, so Minishift actually provides you a local registry, local container registry. So there's a command like uh, Minishift, uh, OpenShift registry, and it gives you the IP address, and then you can actually log into the Docker uh, container registry, and you can push images to there, and you can directly run it from there, like OC new app and run the image directly. So um, uh, so for that, OC, um, Docker DNB is a nice command, so you can use the Docker daemon which is coming out of the VM uh, on your local command line. So it basically sets up uh, certificates to the local environment, the Docker. So basically what happens is your machine has Docker client, and actually it communicates the Docker daemon running inside the VM. And you, you can just run command, it, it feels like almost like native uh, Docker command, similar to how you know, Docker tool was used to work, if you have used it. Okay, so, um, so Minishift community, we have IRC channel, has Minishift, we're pretty active there. If you, I mean, um, all of our team, mostly you know, developers, even some community members, everybody is in Minishift. So if you have any question, uh, please, Come and ask us. You know, we will be really, really help, happy to help you out. And um, a GitHub, you can just search Minishift project in GitHub. You should will get it. Any feature request you have or something you need should be improved, please raise a GitHub issue, and then we can discuss it there. Right. Um, so we don't have a public mailing list. We're working on that. Under the hood, um, the Minishift project actually started when it forked from Minikube project. Anybody who is in Kubernetes 
might know about Minikube. And uh, then we basically started adding stuff. And inter uh, so it uses OC cluster up to basically uh, give, uh, provision the OpenShift instance. And uh, I think that's the right way to go it because OpenShift gives that uh, gives uh, OC cluster up for people to set up locally. But then we do a bunch of stuff to make the experience better and um, you know bundle things like with a red, red, red RHEL VM or the CentOS VM, things like that, which is not possible directly with OC cluster up. And like I said, it uses Lib Machine to communicate the virtual machine thing. So the question is, how do you get CDK? Uh, so if you're not still, still, still not you, uh, still now you have not used CDK, it's actually free, pro, free, free product. It, um, it part of the no cost rail subscription, zero dollar rail subscription. To get zero dollar subscription, you have to register yourself in developers developers.redhat.com, and then you can download it for free. Yes, so we have actually shared this slide. Um, There's the link, so so that you guys can get the URLs right. Um, so it's already there. And for CDK3 beta, we have not published any documentation because it was just a beta and the documentation is not ready. So we have actually published a blog which should give you enough information to get started. With CDK3, you're gonna publish proper documentation. So yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think the developer group does have some like some stuff. There's a debug mode that's built into the Red Hat uh, Developer Studio in the IDE. That you can like actually attach a debugger and like get on into it. Uh, I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, to the application running into the container. So you'd uh -huh. be looking for like look for the, the Red Hat Developer Studio list for that. I should have uh -huh. that information. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thanks a lot.